Hey everyone, the artificial trainer here. Welcome in. Welcome back to my channel. We got a really fun one for you today. We're going to be going through the brand new WAN 2.1 fun control model. As you can see from the examples at the beginning, this is a crazy new model. You can use any of the preprocessors, canny, depth, open pose, line art. You can use any of those to create cloned videos of any video that you want. And even better, it takes less than two minutes on my 5090 for a generation because this uses the WAN 1.3B model as a base and they trained it in order to make it even better. So let's get right into it. If you head to the Patreon link for the post in my description, you'll find this post here. You'll see these two links. So I have all of the links you need will be in the workflow, but if you want to download the models ahead of time, just head to the link. So the 1.3B is going to be the smaller model. That's the one that runs in like two minutes. The 14B is bigger, better quality, but it takes like six to eight minutes to, for a generation on my, on my 5090. And that's at about 30 steps. Okay. So when you open up that link, you'll find this repo. You're going to want to find this diffusion pytorch model.safetensors file and download that. So like I said, if you the the 14B and the 1.3B work exactly the same, so you can grab both, you can grab one, um and just follow along, it's the same thing. So then you're going to head into your comfy UI folder and you're going to go to models and then diffusion models and then you, you're going to put the files anywhere inside the diffusion models folder. So I have a WAN subfolder where I put the models. You can see them here. They're my, my fun control models. Just make sure they're inside your diffusion models folder and any node that needs them will be able to find them. Okay. And just to reiterate, it's, you only need this dot save tensor file. The rest of them are exactly the same as the WAN files. So we can just use what we had. Okay. So once you got your model in there, then let's head over and let's take a look at the workflow. Really easy setup if you already have WAN set up. If you don't have WAN set up, head to the link in my description. I have another video about how to set up WAN and some some tips and tricks on if you're if you're low on VRAM and things like that. So if you don't know how to use WAN already, head to the link in the description and I'll get you started. Okay, so let's download the workflow and open it up and you'll get something like this. Let me just zoom in for you a bit. On the left, all the way on the left side, I have an inputs section for you. The only things that you really need are to upload a video and to upload a, a prompt. This load image we'll talk a little bit about later. It's for if you're really struggling with VRAM and if you really want to use flux for your control net first image generation. But um, if you use SDXL and you have around 10 gigabytes of VRAM, you shouldn't need to use this, this input. Okay. And then the only other thing you'll need to do is depending on the resolution. So right now I have a vertical video uploaded. If you want to do a horizontal, you just need to flip these. So your width would be 832 and your height would be 480. Okay. I'm going to do a vertical video, so I'm going to leave it as is. So I gave you two options for control nets to generate our first frame. I'll show you real quick. I have a, I think I have an example. Yeah. So we have our driving video, which is this on the left. We take the first frame and we use a control net to generate an image of a new person or a new thing in the same pose. And then we run that original image through a, a control net preprocessor, which gives us this control video of the woman's pose. And then we use that control net image and the control video as inputs to create the output. So that being said, these two groups here are going to use a control net on the first frame to generate our first frame that we're going to pass into the WAN 2.1 fun inference. Okay, so I am not going to use flux here, though I do have directions if you want to use flux. I have a 5090 and I was running into some out of VRAM issues. So I, I would expect it's going to be similar for a lot of people. You can still use it. You're just going to want to save off the image when you, after you generate the control net image and then load it into the load image node and then bypass the control net again. And then when you go to run it again, 
using Flux, you'll probably get an out of memory somewhere around here. Run it again, the, the seeds are all fixed. It'll just generate for you um, out after that point, as long as you have enough VRAM to run one. Okay, so instead we're gonna use SDX cells. So I have instructions here for where to get an SDXL model that works pretty good and a SDXL control nets or an SDXL control net repository for a bunch of SDXL control nets. You can download those and plug them right in here. So your checkpoint is going to go here. So that's my juggernaut XL checkpoint. And then your, your control net is going to go right here in your load control net node. And then I gave you a few different options here for using either depth, anything realistic line art or image to do the preprocessor. Just make sure I have a depth control net here. So if you, if you're using something other than a depth map, so if you're not using depth, anything, make sure that you grab the correct, for example, canny or open pose or or a different one, make sure you grab the correct SDXL control net. Okay, so that all should work out for you pretty well. You might wanna mess with the CFG or the steps depending on which model you use. These settings worked great for me. You can also use a different sampler. I know a lot of people like SDM, PP2M. That, that's all up to you. There's a ton of settings to tweak, especially with this model, with being able to use a bunch of different preprocessors and everything. So now, so let's just run that real quick. So I'll show you what it does. I'm gonna bypass the WAN inferencing for now. So let me put a different prompt in here. Um, I'll say a witch woman with gray hair and tattoos on her face looking at the camera. All right, and then I'm gonna run that. All right, so there you go. There, that's gonna be our first frame for the for this generation. So now let's take a look at our pre-processing. So we have a first frame. Now we wanna do pre-processing to create the driving video for this. Okay, so I gave you a bunch of different options here. All of them should work pretty well for, for this scenario. Um, one that I really like is doing a blend of depth and realistic line art. The depth is really good at keeping the, the pose that the person is in. And then the line art is really good for maintaining facial expressions, even a little bit better than DW Pose Estimator. The thing is, if the subject of your driving video is significantly different than the subject that you're trying to create in the new video, you don't wanna use depth because it's gonna make the, the new subject look too much like the original subject. DW Pose is really the only one that lets you stray away from the original subject a, a decent amount. So if you're trying to do that, then I would use DW Pose Estimator. Okay, for this application, I want the witch to look pretty similar to our original video. So I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna use a blend of depth anything and realistic line art. And you can mess with the blend factor and the blend mode to get different different types of, of blending. Um, I haven't played a ton with the image blend, but I know that you can really tweak that to get exactly what you want. Okay, so let's run that and we'll get an output here. All right, so you can see it's kind of a mix of a depth map combined with line art, which is pretty cool. It's gonna give us a great guide for, you know, like the eyes, eyelashes, the hair, all the textures really come in and combine with the depth map. The only thing maybe I would tweak is to make the depth map a little stronger, but this is gonna be good for, for this generation. And here, just to show you both of them side by side, perfect. Okay, so now that we have our pre-processing done for our driving video, all we have to do is throw them into the wand generation and see what we get. All right, so I'm gonna un bypass the one inference and then I'm also gonna allow the comparison node or comparison group to come on as well because I wanna show you guys kind of everything together and how it worked. All right, so let's run this. All right, and while that's running, I'll just explain the the WAN workflow a little bit. So if you haven't ran run WAN before, again, check out my video in the description about WAN. It gives you, it breaks it all down for you. It'll 
really help you get started. I really recommend watching that video if you're having trouble. That being said, you can just download all of the models on your own and figure out where they go. I give you all the links that you need. The 1.3B and the 14B control models are all here. Um, and then I give you some comments here about if you're running out of VRAM, how you can try to save that VRAM. And then there's some common issues like not having Triton installed, Sage Attention installed, and especially not having all of the nodes that we're using installed. ComfyUI Manager does not necessarily give you the nightly version of custom nodes, which is one of the most common questions that I get. So if you're like, I can't find a node, 99% chance that the problem is that you don't have the most recent version of ComfyUI or Wand Video or KJ nodes. So make sure that you update everything before you give this a shot. All right, other than that, I think if you follow this note, you'll be able to get this working. Like I said, I think it's only like 10 gigabytes of VRAM to run this 1.3B control model. So it looks like our inferencing finished. So let's check it out. All right, so there you go. That's a pretty awesome generation. This is actually probably, other than that, there's a little bit of the morphing in the shirt. But other than that, this is one of the better ones I've created so far. So pretty cool generation. Okay, so now I, I wanna just use a different, let's use a different driving video and I'm gonna show you using open pose what's possible. All right, let's use this one of this man walking down the street and we'll say a long haired alien dressed in, let's say wearing a dress walking down the streets. All right, so now we need to use open pose because we are, we're creating a character that we want the clothes to look different and we also want different hair. So depth isn't gonna work for us. So instead, I'm gonna switch my control net here because I'm using a, a depth control net. So we're gonna go to an open pose control net. I'm gonna use the DW pose estimator and then I'm gonna switch this. I'm gonna bypass the image blend node completely and just drag this straight to the resize image node. And then that should give me what I want. So let's run it. And this goes super fast. This is crazy, honestly, I'm used to like doing a video and I have to wait like 12 minutes for the generation to finish before I talk to you guys about the workflow, but now I can kind of do it on the fly, which is awesome. All right, so here's the driving video that was created. You can see pretty good. Here's the <laughs> alien image that was created. It actually looks a little bit off from the first frame, so we'll see how the generation does. So this one didn't quite work out because of what I said. So let's wait for this to load. So because the alien wasn't in the right spot at the beginning of the video, uh, we didn't really get the generation that we were looking for. We'll, we'll, we'll need to try to run it again and see if we can get a good pose here. Otherwise, we're just gonna have to, otherwise we, we're just gonna have to use a different driving video most likely. All right, so I'm gonna turn off the one inferencing for now. And then let's just try to run this and see if we can get a better pose. All right, so this control net's not working very very good. Let's switch over to, let's go to a canny and let's see if we can get it to give us some long hair. There we go. I like that one. All right, let's give it a shot with this guy. All right, so I'm gonna turn the pre-processing back on. I'm gonna turn the wand inferencing back on and I'm gonna turn the comparison back on. So we got our driving video. The other thing while this is generating, these Tcash, SLG, and Zero Star nodes, well, Zero Star is a part of the experimental args nodes. They're still a bit experimental with wand fun. So um, you can try turning them off, turning them back, back on. I think I haven't had great luck with Tcash and SLG, but the experimental arg Zero Star really does help. All right, so our generation finished up and there we go. A little bit of morphing in the background. That's kind of to be expected because we didn't use any depth. If we had if we had created like a mask here and we did a depth around the person while we the inside was this um open pose, 
it would probably be really really good generation because we'd get the buildings stay staying more consistent while getting the the pose of the character to transfer nicely all right so now i want to quickly go through the native implementation of wanfun so before we do that i want to make sure that everyone understands how to update comfy y correctly the comfy manager hasn't really worked very well recently so we want to actually use the pure git to do this if you're having trouble so the way you do that is you just do git pull so I'm already up to date, but some of you may see a message about detached head, which you have to do, I believe you can do like git reset dash dash hard. I would just look that up, maybe ask chat GPT. If you're in detached head state, how do you fix that? So once you've done git pull, you can do git log dash dash one line dash dash negative or dash negative one. And you're gonna wanna see this. So it, eventually this will get overwritten, right? Cause I'm just looking at the most recent commit, but I'm expecting either this commit or a more recent one in order to run this workflow. If you don't have at least this commit, you're not gonna be able to run it. Okay, so now I'm up to date. I'm gonna download the one native fun control video to video and then open it in Comfy UI. So just, drag it in and this is what we got okay so i ha already have this image in here of this ma or this video in here of this man driving a car so i'm just gonna ask for a blue demon driving a car with flames in his eyes okay and then for my control net i'm just gonna use depth anything to generate my image so we'll use a depth map and then I'll use the line art combined with DW pose estimator to get my output. Okay. And then, so let's run that. And then while we're running it, I'll explain the rest of the workflow. So we have a low diffusion model here. This is where we're loading our one fun model. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. So this is where we're loading our one fun control model. I have the, this speed ups, no, uh, group like I've had before. If this isn't working for you, if you're getting errors related to Sage Attention, Tcash, Compile, Triton, anything like that, just bypass this until you get those working. That is pretty much it for this piece of the workflow. The rest of this is the same as the regular native WAN workflow. All of the files are the same other than this original load diffusion model file. That's the only one you need to swap out. If you don't know how to install one already, I have a guide in the description. It'll walk you all the way through it. Head over and watch that video if you're having any trouble. Okay, and now we got our generation. So pretty good. I like that one a lot. So this one actually may be a pretty good one to use this open pose with line art. Okay, so that's it for the video today. I hope that you found this useful. I hope that you, you're able to create some really cool stuff. I'd love to see you head to the Discord and share what you're creating in there. We've got some people who have started to share their con content in there and I love to see it. Also, if you're having trouble, the YouTube comments is not the place to troubleshoot. Discord, we can share images back and forth and things like that. So head over there if you're having issues. Follow my Patreon, follow my other social media, anywhere you can give me some more exposure. It really helps me out, helps the channel and helps me provide you more content. I do have a couple donation tiers up on my Patreon. No, don't feel any obligation to donate. All of my content will always be free. But if you'd like to help support the channel, that's a great way to do it. So yeah, that's it for today. And I will talk to you in the next video.